Ronnie, thanks very much for joining us. It's great to be here. Thank you. You just came in from out, uh, a rally that was happening outside the uh, Specifically, you were with Dennis Hughes uh, from the AFL-CIO? Yeah, he was there. Okay. And uh, specifically, what is the issue that you are protesting at, the point, at this point? Well, the real issue is the lack of respect that we're being shown by the governor. The state workforce, teachers, I think the entire public. The governor is saying that he wants to reduce the size of the workforce. He wants to cut services to the public. He's not negotiating with us at all right now regarding uh, new contracts. And the net result of all of this is going to be fewer people providing the services to the community, fewer people paying taxes, fewer people buying in local shops. And that's all going to trickle down. The community is going to feel the loss of services, the loss of business, the loss of spending, and it's just going to be a downward spiral. So there seems to be two things at, at issue, so let's deal with the first one first. One is a matter of tone that has nothing to do with details. I mean, you put out, the, the union, half, right, yep. put out a proposal, released it to the public, which is unusual because up until that point when you did that, no one was talking. It was sort of very hush-hush. That's right. Which is standard for contract negotiations. And subsequently you say he hasn't come to the table, the team from the administration hasn't come to the table for, for four weeks. That's one thing. We'll get into the details of the proposal and why you hate it. But you don't like the way that he's dealing with you. So if he was, if that tone was different, do you think the talks would be going better? Well, they definitely would. We would not have put out anything in the press. We were staying pretty tight-lipped, as we usually do during negotiations, as long as there are negotiations. When you haven't met with us in four weeks and you only met with us once the three weeks before that, that's not negotiations. State put its demand on the table. We responded with a counterproposal and there's been no discussion at all regarding that. So we felt that we needed to demonstrate that we're trying to work with the governor, but there's no reciprocal attempt on the other side. See, I don't understand why any of this comes as such a big surprise. I mean, down in 2010, during the campaign, the governor made it fairly clear that if public employees weren't quote, part of the solution, and then throughout the budget battle, they would be, you know, part of the problem, essentially. And yet, your union endorsed him, and none other unions endorsed him. I know you've subsequently said that you think perhaps that wasn't right. such a great idea. Right. Well, but we endorsed him because we wanted to be part of the solution. We decided he said some things we can buy into regarding elimination of outside consultants and trying to reduce the number of outside public authorities that aren't really accountable to the legislature, just cutting them back on them. So that's fine. We agree with that. We've been pushing for that for years. So we'll support you and let's try to work together. I'm waiting for the working together part. We're offering to be part of the solution. We're being made part of the problem, even though we're not. But it, it didn't, in other words, you, you pretty much took a gamble. You said it might be actually better, more pragmatic to go along with him and try and have a good working relationship, whereas NYSET and CSEA didn't endorse him and were quite clearly at war, but it didn't matter because you all got lumped in together. That, that's correct. That's right. That's right. We feel like they, we all have our own issues, but we all have same issues too. And that's why we were out here today, everybody's saying we're not getting respected and we're not letting our side be heard. And that's we're just demanding that. So the details can all be worked out later as long as people are sitting and talking. So if you knew then what you know now, you wouldn't have done it, endorsing it. I, I would definitely have second thoughts. But I'm still going to hold him to the things that he campaigned on. The Sage Commission is going ahead. However, they're, they're working so slowly that the, the 200 different entities that the governor said we can get rid of out of the thousand that exist, they're only looking at a couple of them. It'll take them decades to go through them all. So, all right, this sounds good, do it. He has an executive order that he, he wanted to enforce regarding use of outside consultants, and he's telling his agencies to cut back. That's not working. It didn't work for Governor Patterson either. We've got legislation in place that we want to get passed and signed. Just support it and have the law say you've got to be um, more efficient with your money. But in terms of the SAGE Commission, I mean, government is uh, unwieldy. It's like a battleship. It's not a speedboat, right? So you can't turn it on a dime, per se. I mean, you don't think it's by design that they are actually going slowly on purpose because they don't really have an interest in cutting down on government. Slowly, it's like contract negotiations. They should be, they should be you know, paced and methodical. 
And so if, I'll just make up a number, if you should meet 10 times to come out with some conclusion, you can meet 10 times in the course of a week or two, you can meet 10 times over 10 years. You know, just, just meet more frequently so you can have more of these discussions. Do you think what the governor really wants is to lay off 9,800 people? I can't see how he wants to. I um, don't want to say that he's bluffing because people's lives are at stake and, you know, services are at stake. But I, I can't for the life of me see how the state can afford to lay them off and then not do the work. Somebody's going to have to do the work. You know, if you say you want to lay off an engineer or, or an inspector, a food inspector, a bridge inspector, an inspector of nursing homes, you know, or any, you know, somebody's got to do it if you lay people off. So you're going to be paying someone else anyway. You're not saving money. But he, if this is clearly a calculation, right? In other words, all across the nation, we've been seeing for months now that public employees are what the boogeyman du jour. You saw it in Wisconsin. You saw it. You're seeing it all over the place. Of course, Wisconsin is a Republican governor, but mm -hmm. you know, this is a Democrat. And what's going on upstairs, this, this same-sex marriage fight, yeah. he's betting that that is going to make all of the, the progressives come home. And government's clearly too expensive, right? So they'll take it out of the state worker side, and, and unions will just won't have anywhere to go, so they'll come back to him, too. Well, well, we don't have to go anywhere. We can just stay home and let the chips fall where they may if you're but talking about an election. Danger for him in 20, let's argue that he runs for president in 2016. You need labor if you're a Democratic candidate, or don't you? Well, his father ran or tried to run for president, or at least made it noise about running for president. Didn't quite get there. Yeah. And it could be because he didn't have full support of labor. Do you think that after this experience now, I mean, we don't know what the outcome would be. He'll have enough time to get good with labor? I, I don't know. He's got time today. Right. I'll sit down with him now if he wants to talk. And I bet you the leaders of any of the other unions would too. It's, I know there's a lot going on with, with the gay marriage thing and with the rent control thing and all the other things that are going on in the state. But when you're in that position, when you're sitting in the governor's seat, you've got to be able to juggle all these things at once. See, the other problem is there are going to be layoffs regardless, right? Because prison facilities are going to be closing, psychiatric facilities are going to be closing, are closing. And those layoffs are not counted towards the 9,800. That's, That's correct. A tally of $450 million of workforce savings that were included in the budget. Is, do you consider that unfair? Well, I, I do think it's unfair. Negotiations, you know. I guess that's not even considered as part of the contract negotiation. It's unfair for a different reason. Th there are violent youth that are going to be put into community group homes that may not be ready for them. There are inmates in correctional facilities that are now going to either be released or double bunked. Uh, there are psychiatric beds that are going to be eliminated and there are people still sleeping in subway stations that may be could use the help if the state was offering it, but the state's cutting back on the help it, it provides. So there are these other things that I don't think are wise either, and that has nothing to do with the contract. What are you willing to give up? I mean, I don't want you to negotiate a contract with me. I'm not a labor uh, arbiter, and I don't know the ins and outs of labor law. But are you willing to concede? Are you willing to pay more in health care? Are you willing to give up in it, any raises? What our proposal was, is this year we were saying we would not take a raise. We said we would be willing to pay a little more for our health benefits. We said we would be willing to give up some days pay this year and postpone other days pay till some future date, maybe till we retire. And this is a significant change from what was going on when you were saying not so terribly long ago, six months to eight months ago. Well, we, we started out, we didn't want to give up anything. Right. I mean, nobody wants to go in giving up anything right, right right and so one side says I want all this stuff the other side says I'm not giving you anything and you come to some point in the middle we started moving towards the other side the governor's side they haven't moved at all towards us they said it's our way or we're not talking to you that's why there's been nothing happening we're saying we've made some proposals talk to us about them if you can't agree on those say something else and we'll see if we can all move a little bit closer in the next round, but you got to sit and talk. Meanwhile, those, those layoff memos have gone out. There's a deadline, there's a deadline date, correct? The governor has said they will start July 15th. 
What exactly that means, I don't know. There's a process to get things done because, you know, you, a, a place may want to lay off their least senior person, but there may be a less senior person in some other location that this person can transfer to. So you have to have, a, that's called bumping gener generally, and you have to allow for that process to take place, and that can still take a couple of months. So saying the process will start July 15th, I don't know when a person might get laid off. Well, meanwhile, perhaps that there will be talks that take place. I want to thank you very much. We'll, of course, keep people updated, but thanks, Cameron, for being here with us. Thank you for having me.